What's going on guys? Coach Madden, YougoProBaseball.com. We are here in Nolensville, Tennessee at the Hit Lab. Beautiful uh, facility. Uh, it's actually Joey Lewis facility. Um, we've got Nate Headley and Casey Smith. Casey and I played together in the Padres organization. Um, these are some of the best hitting guys in the world. Um, so they're gonna share with us some of their best hitting drills for guys of all ages and uh, really break down what they're trying to do to help their players succeed in the game of baseball and hitting. So why don't you tell me your top two, your top two, and your top two, and then we'll go through it. And if you guys want to jump in at any time and give a tip on the other guys hitting drill, that'd be cool. Absolutely. All right. Good. all right. So I'll go ahead and start it off. For any age hitter, um, you know, some of the things that I see as far as common flaws um, are getting into a good athletic position and creating good direction and rhythm to get there. So we wanna make sure that we're balanced, that we're athletic. And what I see a lot with young guys is they don't know where they wanna be when they hit the ground. So the first drill that I'm gonna talk about is what I call the launch drill. And all it is is just making a hitter aware of where they feel the most athletic. So whenever we go to swing, our body can move as efficiently as possible. So hitting a baseball is the most difficult thing to do in sports. It, by far. So we have to be an athlete when we swing the bat. So what I like to do with guys is I'll first ask them, where do they want to be when they hit the ground? And what you see a lot with young hitters is they'll hit the ground and they've been told stay back. So they get over this backside, right? Or they're standing straight up. They'll hit the ground and their body straight up over their hips, but we're not in an athletic position. So the first question I ask them from them is, if you were to play another sport, you know, football, basketball, and you wanted to guard somebody, would you stand straight up? Would you have your weight back? Or would you be balanced in a strong athletic position? And obviously the answer is always, I wanna get into that position to do anything athletic. So from there I'll go, okay, stay there, and then just pull your hands back up. And then what that does is it starts to get them to feel, hey, okay, this is where I feel athletic from. Now I can learn to swing from there, right? From that, once they get into that spot, now we'll try to create a little bit of stretch in the swing. So then we'll start to pull the hands back let the hips start to separate a little bit so now they can feel some tension and we're removing the slack out of their body right and then from there all they're going to do is take a swing and what i want them to try to be able to do is fire with as minimal movement as possible so they should be able to pull that trigger instantly without having to reload their body or reload their arms if they do that they're in a really good launch position and now we can be efficient whenever we hit the ground all right so all i'm going to do go ahead and try to balance get into that good launch position Feel myself stretch out to remove slack, and then I'm gonna fire. And I should be able to stay right there, nice balanced position. And I'm not trying to crush this ball, all right? I wanna feel a nice smooth swing, but I wanna be able to fire instantly. You notice when I went, I didn't try to reload, I didn't move, I wanna be able to just pull the trigger, okay? So the second drill that we then build off from that is what I call the Griffey drill or stride to balance drill. And the reason I call it Griffey drill is when Griffey hit, his feet were together, love Griffey as a player. So it does a really good job of allowing hitters to now feel some freedom, some direction, and create proper separation, as well as body control, and then learning how to get into that launch position that we just saw, but do it with some movement. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna start with our feet together. I really want the guys to relax their hands, because the move that we're trying to feel is, as I go forward, instead of me pushing my hands back or allowing my hands to come with me, I wanna create separation naturally so I'm just gonna step away from my hands. And you notice when I get there, right back in that same position that I was in in the launch drill, okay? All I want them to feel is stay nice and relaxed, try to go forward slow, and then when they hit the ground, use that front foot to pull the trigger for timing, okay? So now we're building on where we were just at in the launch. I'm now just gonna get to that good athletic position with some movement, all right? Now they can start to put it together. They stay nice and relaxed, step away from the hands, and they fire. Okay, so those two drills for me are some of the easiest and fastest ways for young hitters to start to learn some body awareness, get their bodies into good positions, but do it with rhythm and not feel like they're constricted, even though the first drill is gonna put them in a place where they feel a little uncomfortable. Once we add the rhythm and direction back in, they really start to have a feel where they wanna be. How often should a guy be doing uh, these drills? So I have, especially with the Griffey drill, with the stride of balance drill, I incorporate that in kind of a daily routine for my guys because there's so many things that it reinforces, both good direction, good separation, 
controlling their body with their rear hip, creating some posture. There's so many things that that simple move does. And you see a lot of big league guys like Bellinger and uh, I think like Corey Seager, you'll see guys starting tall, right? And then they actually in the games will make that same move. It just simplifies a lot of things. So regardless of where their actual swing is, that stride to balance drill just reinforces so many key aspects of the swing without having to overthink it. So I, I like guys to do that one every single day. The launch drill can be incorporated if we feel like we're having issues of where we're at when we hit the ground and if we're having problems firing instantly. If you have a kid that gets to the ground and really wants to drift and they don't pull that trigger whenever they hit the ground, it can be a good one to fix that too. So, so for us, we uh, don't do any limited to zero swings as far as game swings off the tee. So all of our stuff is either going to be preset or at an angle. Okay, this one I am angled open and all I'm really focusing in on is getting this barrel turned where I can elevate this ball to center field, okay? The two drills that I'm gonna focus in on are basically the same drill with a variation. So the guys that you have, your big flowy movers, uh, your Mookie Betts, guys like that, we'll go open with them, okay? And all they'll do is they'll stay slow, okay? It's almost firing from launch, just at an angle with my lower body. I'm gonna start to set the hands back, stretch, okay? Then all I'm gonna try and do is fire and hit a fly ball to center field. Okay, do one more. So I'm open, everything's pretty much facing the shortstop. Slow turn back, make sure the hips, big thing we see with these guys when they do this drill is hips and shoulders are moving at the same time. Okay, all we're trying to do is resist that turn back to let everything fire forward and finish. Okay, the guys that you have, your more stiffer movers, okay, we're gonna do something very similar. We're gonna focus more on rotating behind the back hip. So I'm now angled in. My front foot is closed, I'm staggered. I'm gonna feel that same turn back in my hands. Once again, still fighting the turn or resisting the turn here. All I'm gonna do now is rotate behind this hip. I'm not gonna slide into it. All right, so same barrel turn, same focal point. Okay, just different angles with my feet. Nice and slow, resist the turn on the way back. Let everything fire. All right. Um... I'm gonna hit on, I think, path and connection um, are two of the biggest things I see in hitters that I work on a, a consistent basis, especially when I'm trying to evaluate um, what I'm trying to do with a hitter when they initially come in. How do they move? What's their path? And most hitters get exposed initially um, pitches away. Um, is their barrel actually re releasing that direction? So I do a drill I call 50-50 uh, PVC pipe turns. We're gonna grip the straight in the middle. I'll set up a tee down and away. I'll cue the hitter to get to their launch position. Um, and then I'll have them think, basically knob of the bat, barrel of the bat. I want knob working to, to this tee and my barrel releasing through this ball. So this is what I typically see in hitters consistently. The first thing they'll do, their initial move is okay. The, the base of the PVC pipe starts to turn that way and then it becomes a push and a cut. So where their barrel is getting on plane and cutting back across the zone instead of getting on plane and staying through the zone. So instead of a push and a cut where you have this much room of uh, uh, the ability to hit a baseball and square it up, if we get it on plane back here and stay through this all the way out front, now we create adjustability. So we're not, we don't have to be perfectly on time to be successful. So where I thought my fastball was gonna be ends up being a slider or something off speed that I have to keep my barrel going that way. And now I just elevate that ball pull side. That's only gonna happen is if you're, that's only happens if your barrel releases through and chases the ball off the bat. So instead of a push cut, we have to make sure that barrel's releasing basically behind that rear hand. And so when we turn, instead of a push cut, now it's, this is turning that direction until you feel like it can't go that way anymore. That's when the pivot occurs. And now my barrel gets on plane back here and stays on plane length and through. So now I give myself the ability to be successful all the way through here. Not that we're trying to hit balls back here, but sometimes we get blown up. Sometimes we get beat and we do have to have the ability to catch a ball further back. But as long as our barrel stays through that path long enough, now we can take that off speed pitch that we're a click early on and still elevate full side. So now it's a turn and a pivot release versus a push cut back across the zone. 50-50 PVC, PVC pipe turn um, exposes path. Question? Yep. For that one. 
how what percentage are they swinging? Are they going full speed? And so, what is the finish line? Yeah, so uh, when we're doing PVC pipe drills here, I want them to start off at like 50% max. I want them to really feel the direction they're going. So I don't need anything to be real quick here. This is focusing on when are we allowing that barrel to release. And I'll do this ball, I'll do this on balls away, middle and in, because I want them to understand that we're gonna hold the connection longer for a ball in. So we'll bypass our exit one, we'll go to exit two, and now my release is through the middle of the tunnel, or in a ball further in, now my turn and release is gonna be through here. So I don't need high intent, 50 to 70% max. One more, let's talk about connection. Um, I see this is a extremely common in hitters as far as basically their bar barrel dumping away from their rear shoulder or becoming disconnected. I typically do this with, I've got just a deflated basketball, mini basketball in my facility I use. This will probably do just as good, but we're gonna set this on our rear shoulder. We're gonna set our barrel on there. So what I try to do with my hitters is tell them, find your natural slot. So if I get a hitter to launch, right, and they land and they're an ear slot, Right, something that's gonna keep about that much space between their barrel and their shoulders, what we're looking for. If I have a hitter that's a little bit more vertical with his slot, I'll get a bigger ball to put on the shoulder for, hit, for them to hold there. So with this one, I'm more of kind of an ear slot anyway, so this is more natural for me. So I'll just set this barrel on there. I'm gonna keep a little bit of pressure on this just to try to keep myself staying connected here. And now as I turn, if this starts to dump away from my rear shoulder, this falls out. If I stay connected, thank you. If I stay connected with my turn, now, this barrel's staying with that rear shoulder longer as I'm turning, staying connected, and now we're gonna release through out front. The other thing this will expose, especially with a round ball, is if you get a push pattern, you'll feel that ball rolling down the shoulder. So if you feel that ball rolling down your chest as you're turning, we know we're getting a push pattern versus a connected turn and then release of the barrel. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, follow all these guys on Instagram and check out some of these videos that I got showing right here next. Thank you.